there G.I. Joe fans, Joe Motion Videos 82 here. It's time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Today we will be looking at the Snow Serpent version 7, who was released in 2005, uh, direct to consumer. The Snow Serpent was released as an online exclusive, as a part of the 21st series. The card art on this is a little bit different from the ordinary card art that we're used to seeing, so um, I do have a full card back, which I will be showing here um, as a part of the review. Uh, the Snow Serpent was made from the mold of the Snow Wolf version 2. Now, as far as action figures go, this is one of the least of my favorites, and I'll get into that more of the I yeah it's it's pretty bad um, there may be a few of you out there or more than a few that like this action figure I really don't uh, for various reasons and I'll, I'll get into that when we start looking at the action figure uh, but one thing he did have going for it he did co come with a lot of accessories which which is really nice. Um, his he is pretty common on the aftermarket if you are looking for him. Uh, the I found him from eight dollars loose on up to around ten or twelve loose with the accessories. Um, the carded prices go from about. Um, nine dollars on up for for the carded figure so without any further ado let's go ahead and take a look at the action figure hey here he is snow serpent version seven Ta da magic of movies his cards appeared so uh as i mentioned he did come with quite a few accessories he came with a backpack which was taken from the mold of version one. A few more details were added to this. Um, it's not the exact copy, as you can tell. The uh, bedroll is a is painted black. The wrinkles aren't as pronounced on this version right here. It does peg into the back. The peg is flat, but let's see if the vintage backpack will fit. No, it will not. Okay. Um, he also came with parachute pack. Uh, two very, very flimsy snowshoes. A very nicely sculpted rifle. Um, this actually looks pretty close to a real-world rifle, I want to say saw. If anybody knows any different, uh, let me know. He came with a pistol. Looks somewhat like a, uh, a Desert Eagle. Has some nice sculpting on the grip. And this weird Jason Voorhees looking helmet. Uh, absolutely nothing like what a proper snow serpent should look like. Uh, even on the figure stand, this one is head and shoulders above this guy. Uh, looks like a Sasquatch compared to this one. Oh, there is a variant on this snow serpent. Uh, the variant is the cobra sigil is either on the left arm or or on the right arm or over here sculpted on the left. Uh, I do not have the other variant. Uh, one of the big problems I have with these access accessories is his belt it does not want to stay on. Um, there's no way to tighten it for one 
it slips around but it there's no way for it to stay tight and it slides right off his hands are very small so it's hard to get his primary weapon his rifle to fit when it does it falls out the only saving grace is the pistol which does stay in his hand fairly well and the snowshoes of course they they attach to the bottom of his boots on the the old sized pegs and they stay on pretty nicely Put him aside real quick and let's just look at the difference between the card art this is the card art we are used to and this is the difference in the card art um, direct to consumer is totally different you can see Cobra the enemy is different the art in itself is completely different so um, also on the back It has six cells with the direct to consumer um, action figures that were available. Go ahead, take a look at his his paint and articulation. Go ahead and remove that Jason X looking helmet. Uh, he does have similar features to this uh, snow serpent, even. Uh, this one is is much taller. He looks like this one looks like a Sasquatch. Even if I were to put them up equal to one another, he's this one's still much taller. Uh, there is a variant on this one. It's the Cobra Sigil. The variant either shows up on the right arm or the left, which would be um, posted right here since he has a pouch on this side. Uh, that variant, I'm not sure if it's more desirable or not. Um, he is in your standard gray jumpsuit. He has fuzz on his legs, uh, fuzz around his ankles or on his, around his wrists. This is a nice, nice upgrade compared to the other snow serpent. Uh, he does have some decent black knee pads, which are, are nice. Uh, he has some straps holding in, holding the, the fur around his boots and his boots are uh, they have some some traction on them, not too bad. And his legs do extend out to the far, out to the front, so far. The knees bend at a ninety degree angle. Even though he is a modern figure, they do not they're not double jointed. His ankles do not move. They spread out to the side fairly far. Uh, his shoulders um, do rotate in a three hundred sixty degree direction, and they do raise up pretty far. He has a swivel arm battle grip with some very nice elbow pads. Another nice upgrade. He has black gloves. His head does not move back and forth very well, but it does rotate side to side. Has that very nice um, belacava. It is sculpted nicely. There's some ribbing on there, and even sculpt sculpted in his ears. So that's a another point going for him. Uh, his holster is functioning. It's uh, his pistol fits right in there. Seats very nicely. Doesn't fall out. So let's go ahead and rate this guy. Um, or B rate him. One or the other. Uh, his accessories. You know, I'll give him 5 out of 10. Um, mainly because I, I like the guns. They're very, very well made. But his hands do not hold his primary weapon. Uh, which is a, a disappointment. His backpack is pretty decent. That's why I didn't give him a, a lower score on that. So five out of potential ten points on that one. The paint, I'll give him ten out of ten. They did a, a good job on that one. His sculpt, no. It's a three out of ten. I just don't like it. The shoulders are too broad. Waist is too narrow. Uh, in fact, his waist is so narrow that his... Uh, parachute harness will not stay on him and the parachute pack itself doesn't 
um, latch to where it won't move. So that that's um, some major points taken off there. Playability, I'll give him 6 out of 10. Uh, mainly because he won't hold his, his primary weapon very well. Uh, for a total of 24 out of a potential 40 points, he is a bottom shelf figure. So, this is my first bottom shelf figure um, that I've reviewed. I didn't, didn't intentionally give you two, two bad reviews in a row. Uh, I've been wanting to review this one for a, a long time. Actually, when I first got him, I wasn't doing reviews back then. And I thought, well, whenever I work up the courage, I want to review this and um, let you guys see what a direct consumer figure looks like. They're not cheaply made. Uh, I'll give you that. Um, it's just they don't seem to put in as much time and as much care as they do your typical figure that uh, you buy off the shelf. Uh, these are our regular Joes are awesome, as we all know. Uh, I also got this one, well, for the cost, and also he's an Arctic figure. Come on. Besides the Sasquatch size snow serpent needs somebody to push around, so he goes and gets them coffee. But um, I, I really was hard pressed to say something good about that figure, honestly. Uh, the Snow Serpents in general are a very awesome figure. I loved them from the day they came out in 85. They're not in my top 10 of 85 figures, but they are pretty close. Uh, they, I, Even though they are an Arctic troop, back then they didn't do it for me. And even now, you know, the version one, I don't... I'm, I'm in between. I think maybe out of the top 10, they're... 9 to 11, you know, so I'll get into that when I complete my version 1. Uh, but these two, um, the direct G GTC or direct consumer, uh, they do complement any collection. I'm not saying that all the direct to consumer figures are, are bad. There are some very nice ones out there. Um, I have the GTC scrap iron. He's pretty cool. Uh, I've been trying to get the Meta Viper. He's he's decent, and the direct to consumer Crimson Guard I have, and I'll review him soon. Uh, he is really cool, actually. Uh, any Crimson Guard is cool. Even the black Crimson Guards are they're even better. You know, come on, they're clad in black. You know, you can't go wrong there. You know, Snake Eyes. So, um, needless to say, this guy, he fell short of impressing me. If they just would have bulked out his waist a little bit more, that would have been cool. Uh, the head sculpt is, is beautiful. That They could use that on more figures. Um, but uh, he, he was com a complete remold from uh, the Snow Wolf version 2. And uh, in this video, there's pictures of him uh, that I've I've uploaded. So you can see there, the only thing they did was sculpt it on some new paint on him. So anyway, guys, this is this has been an interesting review for me. Like I said, I've never uh, given one such a low rating, but uh, he deserved it. So. If any of you have any uh, questions about this or any comments, especially, uh, please shoot those out. I do respond to comments. Um, if you do own one, and I, I would like to know what your opinion is about them. Um, if if you would say buy or fly, you know, if you buy it or just fly past it. So uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. Thank you all for who have recently subscribed. I really appreciate everyone who has done that, and thank you to all of you who have stuck out with, stuck through this with me um, through these past few months. Uh, for especially my first subscribers, 
I cannot be doing this without you guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I do have a stop motion coming up. It'll be coming up later this week. So stay tuned for that. So this has been Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.